All right, Dr. Mike. Sleep and its importance as it relates to training. Yeah, so a lot of people think they need a certain number of hours, and usually eight's the one that comes up. Some folks are inclined to believe that the more the better. But uh, talking to uh, Dr. James Hoffman a lot, who's our recovery expert at RP, and knows a lot about sleep. Um, it's one of those things where, like, uh, if you, let's say, sleep five hours, like you, for example, sleep five hours a night, and you're reporting that you don't get, like, you know, sort of rusty eyes kind of feeling, you're not dependent on caffeine to get you through the day, you don't even feel like napping with a chronic five hour per night average, there is a potential, potential that you could benefit in your strength training and hypertrophy results slowly over time with a bit more sleep, yep. maybe one, maybe two more hours. But I'm not inclined to bet the farm on that. And because it doesn't seem like you're exhibiting any symptoms of sleep deprivation, uh, and, and, and it's very, very related is people often ask, how do I know if I'm getting enough sleep? And the really short answer is, you fucking know. <laughs> do you want to sleep more? No. You're good. Your body will tell you when to sleep. I, I, I don't think there's a, a whole ton of people out there who feel great <laughs> and nothing's the matter. They don't want to nap. They don't have dependent on caffeine, even though they might enjoy it and it makes them more productive. Like if they don't get it, they don't fall apart. Uh, there's not a lot of those people that if you all of a sudden like make them sleep three more hours a night, they're like, oh my God, that changed everything. It's just one of those things where I think, uh, you know, if you feel like you need more sleep, you probably do, if yeah. you're being honest. And if you honestly, like, just feel pretty rested, and if I made you go to sleep and after five hours you woke up and you're like, so oh, what are we doing? I'd be like, well, go back to sleep. And you're like, I really don't want to. Mm. Then you're probably good from a psychological productivity and probably close to physiological perspective. Yeah. So you mentioned the symptoms of not having enough sleep. Do you want to run through those? Yeah, and totally. How that would impact training, recovery. Yeah. Symptom and number one: middle of the day, late in the day, you start to get really tired and want to take a nap. Yeah. It's the easiest symptom because it's just your body's like, listen, not more sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, the crusty eyes, red eye feeling. You know, like halfway through the day, towards the evening, where your your eyes actually hurt. Uh, you know, that is very related to that tiredness, um, an in inability to focus without a lot of caffeine an ability to stay awake without caffeine. That's one of the confounders is some folks have a pretty impressive caffeine habit where this is the blunt force of stuff. Uh, there, there you go. Through the blunt force of pharmacology, you basically don't even know if you're sleep deprived because yeah. farm takes care of that. <laughs> uh, so you know, uh, pulling back on the uh, like, uh, caffeinated beverages just somewhat and seeing how you respond. Uh, I'll put it this way. If you're getting enough sleep, but you like your caffeine for your mental acuity, if you pull back on the caffeine and you are getting enough sleep, what that's going to feel like is you're not going to instantly fall asleep. You're not going to feel super tired. You're just going to be a little bit irritable and not super focused. And you're like, God damn it, I need coffee. And someone's like, well, what if you don't get it? You're like, I'll be fine, but like... I, I I'd, would I'd prefer be it, right? right. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, if you're actually sleep deprived, you don't know because you're taking that much caffeine. As soon as you pull back, you're going to get this just massive, like, wave-crushing fatigue yeah. of like, oh my god, like I could just sleep forever. And um, another one is if you don't have any, uh, ta uh, pr provided you're not overreached or overtrained, which can disrupt your sleep in, in, in an interesting way. But if you're in a normal trained state and you're just getting not enough sleep, when given the ability to sleep longer, you do, like a rock. Like, let's say it's a weekend, the kids are out at summer camp or something, and there's nothing going on, you sleep for 14 hours straight. Because well, you usually sleep for five, like, yeah, you were sleep deprived, there's no one, ones or twos about it. But, you know, if you normally sleep five, six hours a night, and you have literally nothing going on, you're not an overreach state, and you just wake up at six in the morning and start looking around like usual, hey, you're pretty well rested. So people sometimes think like, oh, I've got to get rest. I've got to force myself to sleep. Like, man, if you're really sleep deprived, you don't have to force yourself to do anything. Now, you may have a problem getting to sleep at a certain time that may make you sleep deprived. Like you may just be really energetic in the evening and that, that could be a problem. But at some point during the day, that will catch up to you. People who go to bed too late will have daytime alertness problems. Yeah. But if you literally just don't have any alertness problems with reasonable dosages of caffeine, uh, and you don't, you're not inclined to just want to sleep forever when you get the chance. Man, you just don't have to worry about it. Because a lot of folks, you know, there's like really, really good 
Joe Rogan sleep guy interview that's been going around. Yeah. More people definitely have to be aware of sleep deprivation. It's very bad for all kinds of things. But th- there's taking everything. Everything can be taken too far. So some folks are like, hey, I don't know if I'm getting enough sleep. And we've got this at our seminars, you know. Yeah. And they're like, well, do you feel like you need to sleep more? They're like, oh, I hate sleep. You're if like, you're sleep deprived, okay. you, know, you, you will know that you sleep Nine times out of ten. Yeah. Unless you're taking a whole lot of caffeine or just really not in touch with yourself for whatever reason. If, uh, oh shit, was that the police? (laughs) (laughs) You gotta hide this package, man. (laughs) Um, It's just, uh, you know. When you know, when you know, you know. And and, the thing is, just to play the other side. Devil's advocate. Yeah, well, not even devil's advocate, just the other side of the spectrum. uh, To support the you need more sleep idea is if you know you need more sleep. You don't have to ask somebody at a seminar, do I need more sleep? Yeah. Like, I've actually been asked this before, like, do I need more sleep to make games? I'm like, how do you feel? They're like, tired as fuck. Would you sleep long if you were allowed to? Like, I'm going to sleep for five days straight. Be like, yes, you need more sleep. Yeah. So uh, your body's really good about letting you know how much sleep you need. And uh, it's one of those relatively rare instances where almost pure intuition will get you real close to where you need to be. Final thing, on a mechanistic level, how much does sleep contribute to the adaptive processes of muscle growth? Um, you know, if we were to say, take four hours of sleep per night to five hours, that's a 20% increase. How much would that increase equate to improvements in recovery, for example? It depends on a couple of variables, uh, especially depends on what you actually need to get fully recovered. But the only way I can uh, put it is potentially not even a lot, potentially everything. Uh, chronic sleep deprivation can take, especially for intermediates and advanced folks. And beginners will grow, like if they don't sleep, they'll grow thinking about weights. Um, intermediate folks, advanced folks, if you've been lifting longer than three to five years, um, enough sleep deprivation, even two hours or one hour less per night on average adding up Mm -hmm. can make the difference between good results and no results. Now, if you take a lot of rest, like you're not physically in high demand or emotionally in high demand when you're awake, if your nutrition is really good, if your supplementation is good, suboptimal sleep may still result in good results, not great results. But if you really fuck up your sleep just by a couple of hours chronically, and like an hour here, hour there is okay if you make it up the next yeah. night. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's usually not a big deal. Also, muscle growth occurs over multiple days, not just one. But, uh, you know, potentially, it's very easy to, to literally rob yourself of all games by not sleeping several hours a night, period. And people say, oh, how's that possible, all games? Well, look, you know, when you're intermediate advanced, you just don't gain that much. You gain a lot over long terms, years, but like if you also miss days of sleep over the years, weeks of sleep, there you go. And, and your body, uh, as we mentioned in several seminars and as in our recovery book, your body always and everywhere values recovery before adaptation. Yeah. And, and sleep is one of the ultimate modes of not just muscle recovery, but total body system and brain recovery. And if you're not properly recovered by a lack of sleep, Man, hypertrophy goes on such a back burner, your body can't even yeah. see it anymore. It's like, my muscle growth, I'm trying to survive over here. Not only the adaptations, but subsequent overload and the ability to For overload. Sure. Yeah. I usually don't get to that one uh, in, in many conversations. It's completely true. A lot of people can take enough stimulants to just overload anyway, yeah. and or, you know, mentally strong enough. And also, we know that you don't have to make a superlative overload very often in training. It just has to be a relative overload. You just think, like, can you hit a three RIR workout with slightly more volume than last week on not enough sleep? Yeah, yeah I've you done can, it a you lot. Can navigate your way there. You can get it done. And yeah. a lot of people, that's the problem. A lot of people think, well, well I can get that done, so it's not a problem. Oh, that's not a problem. But then the you're not recovery. sleeping the next night and waking up and doing it again. Oh, you'll still be able to do it again. You'll just never improve. Um, and that's where the recovery versus adaptation sort of uh, fork in the yeah, road starts separates. to split. It's yeah. like, yeah, you're recovering. You're not adapting. So, mm-hmm. you know, we don't, most of us don't go in the gym just to recover. Mm-hmm. Um, a good way to recover is not going to the gym at all. You'll be plenty recovered. <laughs> so we go there to improve. And, and that's one of those things where if you embark on the – fitness journey and you go far enough in it to where results start to get more difficult, you got to get a lot of the other lifestyle variables, ducks in a row. Yeah. 
Um, and if your sleep's off, if your food is off, it, it's almost like um, being like, you know, I miss like one or two meals per day on average. Mm. To a beginner, lots of muscle growth. To an yeah. intermediate, mm, less. To an advanced, no muscle growth at all. Mm. Imagine one or two meals for an advanced person is 500 to 1,000 calories. There goes your whole surplus. Mm. And if you're not, adv- if you're advanced, you do not grow unless you're in a surplus. What are you going to do? Recomp your 10% body fat, 200 pounds. You're going to recomp to 6% 200 pounds? What is that going to happen? Yeah. No, you got to gain weight. If you're not gaining weight by missing meals, there you go. You're done. So it's one of those things like people ask how important is sleep. Uh, you know, if you have amazing genetics and you're a beginner, eh, you're okay. Party up. College. Yeah. Enjoy. Uh, but as you get more advanced, it's you already know, that's it. You already know where to make the changes. And my sort of, I don't know, f- final point is don't lie to yourself. You know you're not getting enough sleep. Uh, and if you're not, uh, make the changes. Uh, or as Michael Jackson said, uh, uh, be the change that you want to be in this world or some shit like that. Man in the Mirror, it was a great song. Thank you, Mike. My pleasure. <laughs>